all that matters is that two stood against many. That's what's important. Barlow pleases you, Kram. Hello, all you sexy internet people. Welcome to the Occasional Gamer Podcast. This is our second episode. It is Monday, June 8th, 2015, and it's going to be a hot friggin' day. How you doing, Mons? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. It's going to be hot and humid over here. Uh, it's dry over here, so you get the get the wet hot, we get the dry hot over here. I think it's supposed to be like, I think like 90 something, but like 97 with humidity. That's way worse. We're getting 104, but at least it's not going to be like wet, it's going to be dry. So we're all going to be really thirsty. <laughs> We're just going to be super sweaty over here. Oh, yeah, swamp ass. Mm-hmm. All right, well, this is a good week for games, because even though E3 isn't here yet, we got a bunch of announcements. Yes, like, exciting announcements. Like, uh, I guess uh, I don't remember them all, so I guess we'll just go at them one at a time. I say we start with the biggest one, which is Fallout 4. Yes, I agree. A hundred and ten percent. Now, super excited. Now, wh- what did you think of the trailer? Like, I really liked it. Um, it was it was a good length. It showed the game. I'm pretty sure some of those scenes, if not most of them, were actual in game. Um, just maybe fancied up and taken away the the HUD, so it looks like yeah. it was, you know, not. And then um, you saw you saw everything you needed to see. But I will say, you didn't see anything new to Fallout. Like, no, I didn't see anything new. Not even a creature. But, nope. Deathclaw was back. Those things can go suck it. <laughs> this is this, it. Looks a lot scarier now. Oh yeah. And like, uh, the ghouls. Have you noticed the? It showed like a second of the ghouls, but they were all like <laughs> jumping like crazy. Yeah, and they're running at you. Yeah, I remember them being kind of fast in the other one. But since movement was always kind of an issue in Fallout, like kind of static, uh, they were never super scary. You just plow them down. Yeah. But if they're moving like freaking Spider-Man now, jumping and all that crap. I'm going to scream like a little girl. <laughs> and then um, what did you think about the protagonist guy talking at the end? Uh, I think it's pretty good. It would be nice. I mean, I'm sure, you know, being a Fallout game, he's not going to talk a whole lot. You don't think so? I, I, I don't know. I don't know yet. It's too early to tell at the moment. Like, I'm, I'm hearing they're making them talk because they want to make it a story-driven game instead of just, like, open world and you're doing things. I would like that a lot. Me too. Um, unfortunately, it's going to turn off some people because people yeah. like open customization. Um, yeah. Hopefully you'll get to custom. I mean, uh, think of GTA... You have three dudes, and you get to customize them to a certain extent, like outfits, haircuts. Yeah. As long as you get to do that. But I've already seen it online. Um, a lot of people are unhappy that you're not going to be able to play a woman. Yeah. Um, but they did say once you beat the game, you can play a woman afterwards. Yeah. So, so my big question is, is when you play the woman the second round, uh, is she going to talk like a woman? Is she not going to talk at all? Or are we going to get, like, weird cutscenes and, like, it's going to be, like, the guy and then it's going to go back to the girl? Like, I wonder what they're going to do with that. I have no idea, but I know it sounded like Troy Baker, and if it's Troy Baker, they're going to let him talk as much as possible. That's very true, right? Oh, yeah. Now, how much do you think they pay him, like, for these games? I never looked up how much they get, they earn. I, I don't know how much they get paid, but seeing how he's, like... The number two most utilized voice actor, I'm sure it's a pretty penny. Do you think he's living well off of all these roles, or do you think he's barely getting by? I think he's living well. I think he's living well. He has his own Troy Baker jet. Probably. I don't. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Maybe a bus. <laughs> Maybe a bus. Troy Baker bus. Now nah, he's probably just a normal dude. It's high end. Oh I, yeah. I've seen some interviews with him. He seems really cool. Oh yeah. I think um, I think he does some music stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, he has some album. That I I don't know the album, and I can't plug it, but if he has an album, you should check it out. If he talks this well, I'm sure he sings just as well. Yeah. And um, I know one big issue about the trailer a lot of people are having, I'm okay with it, and it's the 
graphic quality of the end game that they were showing. And it, it looks dated. It looks, I would say, early 360 PS2 type graphics. But I'm okay with that because, you know, since they've been showing these trailers with these games with, like, phenomenal graphics and the games have been coming out and the graphics aren't anywhere near the quality of the trailer, I'm okay with it because it gives them room to improve. Exactly. And I think it's <clears throat> I think it's more of an artistic choice if a lot of people in me included noticed like they've been using a lot of colors in this one like in the past ones it was very like gray or brown because you know the world was destroyed and people were theorizing that this takes place long after or at least so many years after uh, Fallout 3 or New Vegas and they're starting to rebuild everything and that's why we see blimps and other things like that so the colors returning to the world I think it's kind of symbolic and then as for the simple graphics that's just uh, artistic design. It's yeah. like everyone's going super realistic. They probably just wanted to go for a certain look. I noticed he's very smooth, you know, like his hair was kind of flat. His, yeah. His, like, armor, he didn't have any, like, big pieces of armor on his jumpsuit. And even yeah. the dog. The dog didn't have a lot of, like, fur sticking out. He was, was just smooth. smooth. Yeah. Yeah. And some people were bitching <laughs> about the shadows, but it's like, fuck the shadows, like... You know, oh, yeah. you know the shadows will be okay. Be vicious, oh, yeah. We're bitching about the shadows. <laughs> and, uh, I guess some general, <laughs> like, the setting and everything, was it in Boston this time around? Yeah, in Boston. And it showed uh, the lo- locales. We had Fenway Park, the Paul Revere statue, the Massachusetts State House, the USS Constitution, Bunker Hill Monument. So there's, they're getting some... tons of stuff big locales in there. And don't forget, um, I forget what it's called, but the robotics industry. MIT. Uh, yeah. No, not not the real one. Uh, oh. <laughs> the Fallout well, one. Oh, yeah, true. Uh, I forget what it's called. Something Industries, but the one that makes all the robots, but it's based in Boston. Yeah. So, and I, I think MIT will be in there, too. Probably. Maybe it turned into that. That could be a real possibility. Okay, and then... Um, to switch it up a little bit, let's look up some news. I saw <clears> that uh, Mega Man Legacy Collection is announced on PS4, uh, Xbox One, PC, and 3DS. <laughs> and it looks like what the Legacy Collection is is Mega Man 1 through 6, the originals, and mm-hmm. some HD quality remake, and then it's got like some challenge mode and something like that. This is cool and kind of a bitch move because if you go on to like, I have. Uh, Mega Man 2 on my D, uh, 3DS and it cost me like 4 bucks or something and this game will probably be like 40 or 30 and you'll get all the Mega Mans so like they really gotta stop selling the individual Mega Man games for like a high price and then like sell these legacy year collections cause they've done this before there was a Mega Man collection on um, Gamecube a long time yeah. ago and I think it was like PS2 and it's the same freaking thing it's like, but a new pack. Oh, it's slightly more HD. But um, with that, and they announced a Major Man cartoon coming out in 2000, either 16 or 17, by the Man of Action team. And Man of Action, they did Avengers Assemble, Ben 10, and a bunch of other really good cartoons. Yeah. Um, it looks like Major Man's coming back. Like, we've been wanting Major Man back forever. And we haven't got any new games, and even this Legacy uh, collection isn't new games. But we're getting Mega Man stuff. I think seeing him in Smash Brothers brought back some like old memories of people and some new fans of him. So I'm um, hopefully we're gonna get a year of Mega Man coming up soon from Capcom. But I don't know. Any uh, news on your side? Um, going to. Oh, yeah, I wanted to hit a couple more things on Fallout real quick before I move on to mine. I don't um, know. They were talking about a release date. A lot of retailers have it set for the end of this year. I won't be surprised if it's delayed. I kind of want it to be so they can fine-tune some anything because they just announced it. I don't think they're going to really be I, throwing it out at the end of the month, year. I wouldn't be surprised if it was pushed um, to next year. But with the rumors that we got that so far have been lining up with the trailer, um, yeah. they said we'd get the game in November. Yeah. 
So it is a, it is a possibility. <clears throat> and also, it won't be on 360 or PS3, which, I mean, let's be honest, next gen, or current, we, I guess you're calling it current gen now, shouldn't be on last gen systems anymore, because that would just be holding back what we have now. I really hate to say it, but it's true. We should start focusing on the next gen and stop worrying about making old versions. Um, what's the problem? Uh, Mortal Kombat X. Uh, it still hasn't come out on PS3 and 360, but it is coming out. Yeah. Um, in December or something like that. That's crazy. It's yeah. like seven months after it comes out. Or something. I can't that was count. like Titanfall. Seven. Titanfall took forever to come out on 360. Oh, really? Yeah. See, <clears throat> you would think because it's like a, a, a Microsoft game, they would have had it good to go. For all this, oh, yeah. For everything, if they were going to do that. Oh, and I guess trailing off that and going to my announcement, the one I'm really, really excited for is they had a leak that uh, the Nathan Drake collection for Uncharted will be coming out in October. Oh, that's right. Yes. Now, I don't know about you, but, like, I, I haven't played all of them. I haven't played the, the first one. So this is a great opportunity to play stuff in the series that I haven't got to and then replay through stuff like the second game which is amazing. Oh yeah. With HD graphics. And the game already looks stupid good. Oh yeah. But with HD graphics it's gonna look even better. Oh yeah, and uh you know a lot of people are really hating because that's all they do anymore is remaster and re re release games. I mean, I'm okay with it because you don't have to buy it if you don't want to. <laughs> it is a little bit awkward. Yeah. But, like, it's going to happen, and, like, the games they're doing, like, I like them. Like, they redid Devil May Cry. I didn't play it on last gen, so I got to play, you know, the definitive version, and it's really yeah. good. Um, I'm not going to vouch for that plot, but the action, and it, it looks really good. Oh, uh, yeah. And then um, HD recollections. Um, they did the HD collection thing last uh, systems. Didn't they do, like, God of yeah. War? And I know they did Metal Gear. Yep. And Towards like, the end of the yeah. system. So yeah. it, it's just what they do. It's like, who cares? Like, Oh, yeah. As long as it's not, like, taking priority over making new games, it's okay. Most likely, the development teams for, like, Skyrim and stuff, say, like, Skyrim got remastered for uh, PS4 or Xbox One, which most likely might happen. It won't be the original developers that are remaking it. It'll be no. like another team. So it shouldn't take up any time. It might take up some of their resources, but I don't think it would like delay the next uh, Elder Scrolls or anything. Oh, yeah. And I know uh, it looks like they're going to be talking about definitely Uncharted 4 at E3 because they just so much on my Twitter account, they showed a uh, big banner across one of the buildings that shows Uncharted 4. I know they, they've been um, teasing it on like every time I go on the PlayStation Store, they're telling me to pre-order the damn game. Oh yeah, um, it's it's online, it's everywhere. Um, they've probably been saving like a good video for this uh, E3. Now, um, this is like the the original trilogy for Nathan Drake was its own story, right? This is going to be a brand new story. Uh, as f far as I know, I don't. I mean, I'm not sure how it's going to happen, but I do know Troy Baker's in it, and he's playing Nathan Drake's older brother. <laughs> Troy Baker's in it. And, you know, Nathan Drake is voiced by Nolan North, the other biggest voice actor in video games. Oh, that's right. So they're yeah. they're going to be brothers. Yes. That's perfect. I wonder if they're going to be, like, like, throughout the whole game, just, like, back and forth. That'd be awesome. I hope they oh, don't yeah. just use Troy Baker for, like, a couple scenes. I no, I hope it, I mean, you know, going back to, like, Uncharted, like, it's so, like, the games had so much humor in it. Like, he's, he's just, you know, this down to earth, he's kind of goofy. That's very true. And so I hope they just have a lot of banter, you know, the sibling rivalry. I hope that's in there. Do you think he's going to have, like, the same personality, or do you think they're going to make him different? Uh, seeing, seeing how, uh, are you talking about his brother? Yeah. I think he's going to have a different personality. Like, he seems to might be a little more. I don't know. I don't know how how to say. I guess a little. Actually, I don't know. 
We'll just have to wait, I guess, <laughs> until <laughs> E3 to see if they show any more about it. Okay. But I, I do think I, I think Nathan Drake will be a little bit different because I know it's set several years after the third game, and he's older, so he's he might not be as you know as cocky as he was. That's true. Either he's gonna be just as cocky. Or hopefully he does, like, the typical, like, Han Solo thing, and he's just going to be, like, drunk and depressed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he'll be both. He'll be cocky and drunk and depressed. Um, so we're at about 30 minutes right now. I say we cover, like, at least one more topic before we call it. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to talk about? What interests you this week? Um, I, um, not, nothing much has really happened. I mean, just playing games here and there, but, uh, I will be over on my Twitch channel, Don Mullins, probably, I'll probably post it on YouTube, which my YouTube channel is just Brian Mullins, because I'm very unoriginal, but, um, I'll probably be doing a couple impression videos on Elder Scrolls Online tomorrow. Oh, did you I, get it? Yeah, I pre ordered it and I'm picking it up in the morning. But I'll probably do a couple couple I'll probably I think the way I'm doing mine is like every new game that comes out that I've getting, I'll do like two impression videos on it cuz I did that for The Witcher 3. I just did two impression videos cuz I don't really think you need really that much more information on it, but um I've never played Elder Scrolls Online other than like 5 minutes of the beta for PC cuz yeah. I didn't really care for it then. But I've heard since they've had like six major updates for it and a lot of things have changed, I'm willing to give another shot seeing how they dropped the subscription model. Very true. It's probably a lot smoother now. I mean, no MMO in oh, the yeah. beginning is really good. Um, even WoW had its complications. And Well, I mean, if you like WoW, WoW's a lot better now. Yeah. But, um... What I was going to say... Uh, oh... I forgot to mention Batman's coming out soon. Oh yeah, we're like what, thirteen days away or something like that. Very close. I know you'll be playing that. I will probably play it sometime down the road. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna pick it up. I might make a video talking about it, but um, I don't. I don't know. I might just mention it in one of the podcasts. Oh yeah. I, Go ahead. I don't know. I, I was gonna wait for you to talk. Oh, and I forgot that you told me this earlier uh, going to the gaming news that MOBA Infinite Crisis is shutting down. Oh, I forgot to mention that, yeah. Uh, that was as abruptly announced uh, a couple days ago. And it was posted officially by them, but or not, it was officially on their like own website. But whoever posted it, it was by Anonymous. So I don't understand like who exactly... Like, because it's, it's on their website, but it's anonymous. Why wouldn't they just say the person? Yeah. So Or the <coughs> company. But yeah, yeah, and we... Infinite Crisis is gone. Oh, yeah, and we've talked about this in the past. It's like this, uh, going to the gaming news that MOBA Infinite Crisis is shutting down. Oh, I forgot to mention that, yeah. Uh, that was as abruptly announced uh, a couple days ago. And it was posted officially by them, but... Or not, it was officially on their like own website, but whoever posted it, it was by anonymous. So I don't understand like who exactly like because it's it's on their website, but it's anonymous. Why wouldn't they just say the person? Yeah. So or <coughs> the companies. But yeah, yeah, and we. Infinite Crisis is gone. Oh yeah, and we've talked about this in the past. It's like the same thing with the the MMO market and the MOBA market. You know, there's like going to be. One to two, three, maybe major games that dominate that market. And if you put out your game and it's similar, it's going to fail. Like, Infinite Crisis was pretty much identical to League of Legends. This is very true. It was exactly the same almost. Down and like, to the, the four button moves, to the two sub spells, uh, the Dominion map, everything. Oh, yeah. And like... You know, the three major ones that are dominating the MOBA market right now is you got Dota 2, League of Legends, and Smite. Smite is different because it's in third person and it's using like all the all the gods throughout mythology in it. And I never really played Dota 2, so I don't know how 
different it is from the league, but it's on it's it's on Steam and Valve. So, you know, they've already got that major hold in the market anyway. But it's on it's it's on Steam and Valve. So, you know, they've already got that major hold in the market anyway. You forgot a fourth new contender, and that's Heroes of the Storm. Oh, yeah, I forgot Heroes of the Storm. That just was officially released, I think, a few days ago. Yes, and I do I do like Heroes of the Storm. I really enjoy it. Me too. I think the big problem, though, because um, my system is not the best computer system. Yeah. Um, so it runs it a little, a little slow, like a little bad. Um, but that's just on my end bad. But unfortunately, lead <clears throat> plays buttery smooth, so I don't understand why Heroes doesn't. Yeah, it's, you know, companies they don't sometimes don't even optimize their games as well as they should. That's probably the reason. I know Total Biscuit mentioned that it's going off of the same system as StarCraft Two. Yeah. So, again, it looks beautiful, but it's like, it's, it always runs a little bit laggy, but... Yeah. I guess that's just how it goes. I didn't oh, yeah. spend any money on that game, so I don't feel too bad. Yeah. There's a bunch of people that did, though, and they're fucking pissed. But oddly enough, the same day that uh, it was announced that the game was being going to be shut down, I think August 15th, mm-hmm. um, Steam announced refunds. On Steam. Yeah. Do you see that? Only on, yeah, as far as I know, it was only on Steam. Like, the, if you buy their starter packs, they're going to refund you. The same but, day, dude. Like, they planned yeah. that shit. But, like, if you... I'm sure if you, I'm sure they're gonna have some kind of refund system out. I think it's messed up there. that the game is gonna be canceled so fast. I mean, it was only out for two months, and they're only gonna refund the starter patch, not if you bought individual skins or champions. Yeah. And you could argue it's like, well, that's the risk you take with these games. Like, you know, they can shut down at any time, but usually not like within the same year. Usually, like oh, that's, yeah. that's kind of kind of messed up oh yeah i agree that's like that's how it goes i guess um and as for all those mobas that we mentioned uh all of them are vastly uh different like oh each yeah one feels a lot different like when i play heroes versus lead i don't feel like i'm playing just a moba like oh yeah that and they have a lot of uh like map interaction in heroes of the storm like to for your advantage the maps are super important. I find that, like, when I'm in lead, people seem to notice the champions first. They go, like, oh, they get these champions. They get that champion. Oh, this <coughs> is going to be bad. And then yeah. in Heroes of the Storm, first thing I'm noticing is the map. It's, uh, oh, it's this freaking map. Oh, I, I like this map. I don't like this map. I don't care yeah. what champions they get. Except uh, that fat undead thing with the hook from WoW. I forget what it's called. But fuck that guy. Stitches. Stitches. Fuck that guy. Like, <laughs> like, cause I'm a little bit laggy. That dude can like matrix grab me from anywhere. It, that's whatever. Yeah. But you know they come and go. Yep. Yep. All right. So, I think we're gonna call it. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the Occasional Gamer Podcast, Episode Two. Uh, this has been uh, Nasty with Mullins. Talking the good talk. Uh, Mullins, would you like to say anything before we turn this off? Uh, take it easy, everybody. <laughs> that's, about, that's about all I got.